we are looking at the Emubuntu Linux. So here is the boot menu, utilities and languages. I'm going to choose the English language. So try without install or install it using Calamaras. Uh, you can directly install from here or you can just uh, try the live boot first. Uh, in my point of view or if uh, you ask my suggestion i always go with the live boot first uh, and then go with the installation because however the installer uh, will be available in the live desktop also so it's always a good option go with the live boot first then go with the installation later because if you find any uh, bugs or crashes in the linux distro it will be helpful to remove the iso file so i'm running on a virtual machine which is a vmware with a 60 GB of hard disk and a 4 GB of RAM and my CPU is a 12 Gen i5 1240p so let's quickly boot it in a live boot so here is the Emubuntu uh, desktop so it took like uh, 45 seconds in my laptop so it should be uh, more or less in your PC so it completely depends on the uh, PC so let's first change the display resolution so before that let's uh, try to open the task manager so we can see how much of resources it consumes in the beginning of the video i'm going to place the task manager in the right side corner throughout the video so you can see the all the changes throughout the video so right now the cpu is around like a maybe under 40 percent it's not still stable uh, you need to run like a 60 seconds and you should be getting a perfect graph here so right now it's almost a 1.1 GB which is a 30% of the memory I'm using a 4 GB of RAM for my uh, VMware so these are all the process running right now so let's first change the display setting so you can see properly so my monitor is 1920 into 1080 here it is let's uh, save that So here is the version 0.1.11 for the AR and R screen load editor. So I'm going to put the task manager in the right side corner. So we didn't open any of the apps, just the uh, welcome screen app or the welcome app. So you can switch to LXQT or continue under XFCE. You can choose anything you want. I'm going to continue under XFCE. So let's first go to their uh, official website and see all the changes. So the ISO file was released a few hours ago just like uh, four or five hours ago so keyboard configuration currently your keyboard map is uh, united states i'm going to keep that so and here is the desktop uh, configuration you can activate the dock lock the emabuntus default clock activate the taskbar these are all some of the customization you can choose whatever you want activate a dark theme activate sound events all these things it's clearly up to you you can do that later by going to application menu settings um eventus and uh, desktop so i'm going to click ok so please select the dock version which uh, best fits your needs uh, if you choose all for those uh, wanting access to all applications you get all the applications in the, this all and in simple for newbies and my dear old aunt means uh, it's for a normal user and this for is a, a basic uh, which is beginners and it's for children I don't think a lot of children use the Linux, uh, but uh, if they are using, that's good. So I'm going to choose all. Click on OK. So here is the welcome to Emubuntu Debian Edition 5, and here is the dock. As you can see, it's pretty much like a Mac OS, not exactly, but uh, you get a dock. Even Linux has dock, and uh, you get a Happy New Year 2024 under the above the dock, as you can see so the username is uh, emubuntus and the user and root passwords are both live as you can see here uh, you can remember this let me close this because we don't need it let's open the uh, firefox web browser i think there is a no i thought there was like a crash or something like that it uh, it was frozen for a few seconds maybe i didn't properly see that so let's open the web browser and open the official website so firefox opened instantly and uh, as you can see the cpu is for some reason it's almost a hundred percent and the memory is almost i guess uh, maybe 40 percent 
which is uh, 1.9 GB which is pretty odd so let's change the search engine and uh, let's type in the imbuntus so just type in this search term and you should be good to go and you should be getting the official website in the top link it's the english version so this is the url you can directly copy the url you can't copy you just need to type in so here is the uh, blog or the release note information january 2nd 2024 i said already i was uh, uh, this iso file was released a few hours ago so here is it is i'm making a video on it as soon as the iso files are released i will make a video on it so if you want you can subscribe if you not it's clearly up to you i don't have any problem with that so the mbuntus collective is happy to announce the release of new mbuntus debian edition the version is 5 1.0.1 1.01 sorry and you get the 32 and 64 bits so in 2024 it's a better option to go with the 64 bit instead of 32 bit but if you want to go with 32 bit it's clearly up to you so and it's based on the latest version debian 12.4 bookworm and supporting both the xfce and lxqt desktop environment if you want you can go with the xfce or lxqt it's clearly up to you you get uh, two options here and here are some of the changes the new release of our distribution mainly concerns updates to the embedded software except for the replacement of veracrypt by zulucrypt made necessary you can just go to their official website and read everything so here are the uh, information and uh, the main thing is here the changes and the features this is the main thing you need to look it for so it's based on debian 12.4 fixed live repository uh, problem included uh, filezilla 32-bit ver version swapped veracrypt with zulucrypt updated mbuntus debian edition 5 installation tutorial in english and the software you get is uh, firefox 115.6 oesr let me see that about uh, support you get all the information here so if you want to just check the uh, version of the firefox you can just do that like uh, usual like here uh, if you want all the information you can go type in about support and you get all the information here so if you don't like this you can just skip this part so the, here is all the information if you want you can pause the video or you can slow down the video in youtube playback sp uh, speed uh, the default will be 1.0 and uh, change it to 0.25 and you should be seeing everything in a slow-mo so this is all the information so let's close this thing so let's get back here we get a thunderbird 115.6.0 warpnator 1.6.4 free tube 0.19.1 ventoy 1.0.96 and debget 0.4.0 and ancestress 11 2023 11.09 and if you want you can just uh, click on the download distribution so you get all the iso files here so here is the uh, language selection you can change the languages there are few languages available here almost like a 10 to languages so you get the torrent link and the https link uh, for the source forge so direct download links via sourceforge in red and the torrent links will be in a green so let's uh, click on the 32 bit and 64 bit you can choose anything let's click on the 64 bit recommended version and it will take directly to the uh, sourceforge website here is the iso file it's almost a 3.8 GB. You can directly uh, go to SourceForge and type in Mbuntus in the search bar, like here. Let me show you Mbuntus, and it should be like this. This is the link. So, here is the ISO file you can directly see here. So, let's close this thing let's uh, try to open all the apps not all the apps just the imported apps which are changed 
so if we open all the apps it's going to take ages to make a video it will be like a one and a half hour two hour of a, a video so i don't want to make that much of lengthy video i'll just show you the uh, new features and uh, in the video so let's check the version it's a 115.6.0 you already know all these things you need to uh, create a contacts and uh, so you already know how to use thunderbird so no need to show you everything so all these things so let's close it so we already saw the firefox web browser version so what else we have so let's first check all the applications which comes with the uh, mbuntus so these are all the applications which uh, uh, pre-installed comes with the uh, mbuntus linux distro so there are plenty of uh, applications available in this uh, linux distro that's pretty good for the people who want to use all the software like a uh, image editor video player all those things so it's packed with a lot of uh, bloatware i should call it but it's pretty helpful so it's clearly up to you you can call it as a bloatware or important apps it's clearly up to you so here is the about xfc you get a 64 bit i downloaded the 64 bit and the xfc version is a 4.18 you can switch to lxqt if you want and gtk version is a 3.24.38 and the kernel version is 6.1.0-16 and this is my cpu information which i already mentioned so let's try to check other applications so audacity is not changed what else is changed here is uh, filezilla and uh, let's check other applications which are changed firewall calculator gimp is not changed inkscape nothing is changed in inkscape library office is also not changed so these are all the applications available so instead of that uh, let me open the important apps and uh, see whether the uh, linux distro will handle it or not the version is 3.63.0 so let me open like a uh, uh, 10 to 12 apps so we can see the uh, system resources how much of uh, system resources it consumes so let me open like a uh, gimp library office all those things so let's open inkscape let's even open the gimp let's open the uh, library office under system you get uh, all the simple things let's open the snaptic package manager so as you can see it's taking a bit of time because we are opening all the application at once so that's the reason so there is nothing wrong with the uh, distro so it, it is taking a bit of time here so nothing to worry here so let's get back to the task manager and uh, see how much of resource it's consuming so it's almost like a 1.9 GB still and these are all the process running right now CPU is pretty much uh, under 40% so it's not still stable as you can see there is a high peak here here completely there is no uh, stable graph in the uh, Linux distro of mbuntus so let's try to open other apps for example uh, gparted what else we have to open here is uh, let's check other apps so let's open the software uh, which is app store let's even open the file manager we pretty much opened like a uh, nine apps let's still open like a uh, four or five apps and uh, check the system resources so let's open the appearance here it is so as you can see everything is opening instantly so there is no lag or anything just because we are opening the applications at once so that's the reason there was a bit of delay so that's pretty much okay in the development we don't have anything education we already opened the library office so 
apps these are all some of the education apps we don't need to open some of the games i don't need to open that so what else left here dark table let's open the dark table so gimp and inkscape and uh, like a dark table are some of the a uh, bit of uh, resource consuming apps so everything is running pretty good as you can see even i opened like a bunch of apps the cp went to almost uh, 80 to 90 percent maybe and the cpu and the ram uh, it went to 2.6 gb which was 1.9 gb in the beginning of the video it was almost like a 1.7 1.8 uh, but right now it's almost 2.6 gb we opened LibreOffice, Inkscape, uh, GIMP and some of the apps like almost 10 12 apps as you can see so let's try to switch uh, applications everything is working pretty much uh, instantly as you can see there's no delay this is downloading some packages so ignore that task manager, mbuntus file, file manager tuner file manager appearance everything is working properly as you can see so there is no delay or anything like that so i should consider this is a stable iso file but uh, the, it was released like a few hours ago so it's always a good option try to uh, live boot first and uh, wait for a few days or few hours and then go with the installation at least uh, leave it like a one two days then go with the installation if you want don't just uh, directly install it if it's not a work pc you can uh, test it if it's your main pc or work pc don't try to install it directly so just wait for a few hours or a few days uh, it will be good so what else we left here is uh, let's open the audacity and uh, i think we covered everything i guess almost every important app is already opened so let's get back the task manager 3 gb i'm using a 4 gb of ram uh, in 2024 it's a better option go with the 4 gb of ram at least because uh, it's almost 2024 you need to have at least a 4 gb of ram so it will be good for uh, even if you have like a normal cpu 4 gb of ram will be helpful so it's clearly up to you if you still have the low-end pc it's uh, uh you can try it if you want so don't try to install if you have a low-end pc try to live boot first if everything is going good uh, then go with the installation so if you have like a 2 gb of ram uh, you can just use like a two apps two to three apps uh, once and uh, you can good to go like a day to day so if you open like a five to six apps it will be going to be like a almost a 2.3 gb like that so if you have like a 2 gb of ram uh, you know already 2 gb of ram will be having like a 1.8 gb in numbers so i don't think 2 gb of ram will ram uh, will uh, use this much of uh, applications you can't use this much of applications in a 2 gb of ram you can just open three apps maximum i guess so it's almost like a 3.1 gb let's put it in the right side corner so let's try to see whether we have anything left here so package update let's open pc information and that's it let's uh, switch applications as you can see there is no delay or anything like that everything is opening instantly no lag or anything so that is pretty good work from the mbuntus so let's check all the version and close this thing and uh, check some of the features and end the video so the dark table version is 4.2.1 as you can see here so uh, let's close it or as it is let's check the version and close that thing also 3.2.4 departed 1.3.1 filezilla i already shown the version so here is the version let's close it gimp 2.10.34 let's even close this so even uh, closing the application is pretty much uh, smooth as you can see and uh, instantly it is closing instantly the library office version is 7.4.7.2 let's even close this thing you get a update system updates these are all the updates available so installed apps these are all the installed applications 
in the Linux distro. So if you want, you can explore, you can search and uh, install. From here, you already know how to do that. So no need to show everything. So flat hub, install all the options. So the version is here, version history, project website, all the things you already know. So let me close that thing also. Inkscape, you get to 1.2.2. Let me show you that. Thanks. New document. And here is the application. Let's check the about memory. Let's even check the about Inkscape. So here is the version 1.2.2. Here is complete information. Let's close the Inkscape app. Here is the Snaptic package manager. The version should be like a 0.91, I guess. Yes, it is 0.91.3. So these are all the up packages available here. And the version will be latest version will be in the right side corner and installed version will be right here. So it will be highlighted like this dark green. So let's close that thing. So let's go to the Tuner file manager. Check the version, which is 4.18.4. .4. File system. Here are the file system. Sys. Kernel. Hypervisor. Firmware. Lib64. Lib. Home. This is a user folder. So you already know everything here so no need to show everything because it's going to take ages so here are some of the customization it's clearly up to you to customize bookmarks go view edit file these are all some of the customization and uh, hidden files you can invert selection all the things zoom in zoom out all those uh, features which were already available in the previous version so no need to check this all these things i know i don't need to show you everything here because it's going to take a lot of uh, lengthy video so themes you'll get this many of the themes and icon sets is here and fonts settings if you want a uh, window scaling you can go with the 2x it will be pretty much bold so it's clearly up to you if you have like a a blurry vision or anything like that you can change that thing it will be a, a good uh, for people who can't properly see it will be helpful so you just need to click on the anything and uh, click on ok it will show everything so let's uh, check uh, view system information click ok you get all the information here so these are all the information you can just pause the video and read everything so let's type in the some of the command let's exit this thing let's open the terminal so let's first show you the hash top here is the hash top so let me type in some of the commands inxi-sv8 this is the command which will grab complete distro information let me change the color so you can properly see it let me load the preset which is uh, black and white so here it is the all the information of the distro is available in front of you audio network bluetooth everything is available in the command so let's type in neofetch Neofetch is not pre-installed, so let me type in inxi-f capital F Let's type in inxi inxi-b inxi-capital G Let's type in cat fallen slash etc fallen slash issue hit enter mobuntu debian edition 5 so let's exit this thing i think we pretty much covered everything i guess so here are the some of the desktop features 
so these are some of the uh, basic desktop uh, xfc desktop uh, features so there is nothing different or there is nothing new features here so pretty much i pretty much covered everything i guess so if i forgot anything you do let me know in the comment section i will be making another video if you want uh let let's try to uh, make the lxqt version if you want do let me know in the comment section so installation om installation or classic installation you can directly install it after you satisfied with the live boot you can go with the installation here so here is the calamaras installer so again this is the basic installation steps there is nothing complicated here so you already know how to install but uh, i am going to do that in a fast way i'm not going to install because i need to make another video so the calamaras installer you get is a 3.2.61 so i'll be posting two videos daily without missing any day so if you want to subscribe you can subscribe so if you don't want it's clearly up to you you can just watch the video and uh, check others channel i don't have any problem with that choose your location and language some of the customizations you can choose the map or you can choose the drop down menu it's clearly up to you choose your keyboard model mine is tell choose your language i am going to put it default here you need to choose your hard disk for the installation if you have virtual disk you can choose the virtual disk or if you have a hard disk you can choose that hard disk if you have like a multiple hard disk you should be seeing a multiple hard disk when you click on it so if you want to erase everything on that hard disk you can choose this option if you want to choose the manual partitioning which is like a dual boot option you will get another operating system along with the current operating system so if you want to do that you can go with this or if you can uh, erase the disk it's clearly up to you you can go with this do remember that it will erase everything which is available in that uh, hard disk whether it's a virtual disk or a hard disk whatever it is if you choose this option it's going to erase everything so here are swap no help net swap with help net swap to file sorry because i'm stuttering i'm too much tired so ignore that please so if you want to encrypt the system you need to provide the both the password uh, and the both the boxes which should be same so here is the bootloader location you can choose anything here if you want to do that later it's clearly up to you click on next you get a username password you need to create a username and the password let me type in the username and password so you need to use the uh, alphabets here if you type the numericals it will say that you need to start with the lowercase letter or underscore You need to provide the password which should be same in the both the boxes so if everything is going good you should be seeing a tick mark right here login automatically without asking for the password you can customize anything here according to your wish use the same password for the administrator account you can choose the same or you can just uh, provide the password it's clearly up to you click on next you get the all the summary of whatever you choose in the previous steps of installation do check all these things if everything is good you just need to click on install it's going to take like a 5 to 10 minutes depends on your pc in my pc it usually takes like a 5 to 10 minutes or sometimes it will be more so if it's a iso file is stable you should be very quick and if it's like a development or a beta version it should take a, a few more seconds there few more minutes maybe so that's the installation process after installing it will it's going to be installed on your hard disk or virtual disk whatever you choose for the installation destination you should be seeing that so i think pretty much covered everything i guess so at the end of the video these are all the processes running right now so the cpu is around maybe below 40 percent it's still not stable so as you can see it's you can it it's clearly up to you to judge on your own whether to use this linux distro or not and to use this uh, desktop environment or not uh, you can choose lxqt or xfc it's clearly up to you and the memory is almost like a 2.3 gb or for 3.8 gb at the end of the video
so i didn't expect xfc should be consuming like this much of apps uh, this much of uh, memory usually the xfc desktop environment will consume like a 1.1 gb or maybe 900 mb sometimes most of the linux distro of xfc consumes that much of uh, apps in the resources in the beginning of the video but uh, mabuntas case is uh, different it took like a 1.9 gb in the beginning of the video and it and the end of the video it's like a 2.3 gb but uh, everything was responsive so that's the main thing we want so if you have like a 2 gb of ram it's clearly up to you to use it or not if you have like a low end pc it's clearly up to you i'm not going to force you i'm not going to recommend anything like that it's clearly up to you so if you still want to try it on your low end pc you can try it on lali boot first uh, after you're satisfied then go with the installation if you want or else you can just uh, skip that part so i think that's the end of the video let's uh, check the logout screen and end the video so you already know the username and password which i already shown in the beginning of the video so you don't need to worry about that you can provide the password so this is the logout screen you can switch to lxqt desktop accessibility and uh, shutdown button so i think that's the end of the video thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit the thumbs up button it helps make a good content for you other than that i'll see you in tomorrow's video peace out